Joining us for the conversation, my former colleague in the House and the former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Skyping in this morning from Holland, Michigan, Pete Hoekstra. Pete, thanks very much for your time and uh, enduring the snowfall there in Holland as we talk about a deep freeze in relations between the United States and Russia. You just heard General Breedlove. The Russian troops are coming in. The border is wide open. Is this President Putin playing chicken with President Obama, or is Putin really getting ready to once again invade the Ukraine? Well, I think, uh, number one, what Putin is doing is he's solidifying the gains that they've made over the last three to six months. Um, the second thing is, you know, he is exercising their influence uh, with the expectation that he may expand it, whether he expands it, to, uh, expands it into the Baltics, uh, additional parts of Ukraine. That's kind of uncertain. But Putin feels empowered right now. He sees a vulnerable America. He sees a vulnerable NATO, and he's going to take advantage of it to strengthen Russia's position. So we, we saw him leave the summit in Australia early. We saw Western leaders turn a cold shoulder. But again, what, what American reaction will, they, will there be to these new developments in Ukraine? Are you expecting Mr. Obama to, to do anything in response? I don't think uh, Putin is expecting America or NATO to do anything in response that threatens or weakens his position uh, or effectively uh, puts sanctions or restraints on Russia that jeopardizes his personal position in Russia. He's playing to a home audience, uh, but what he's finding is that he's playing, as he's playing to a home audience, uh, he's also, he's also able to make gains in the rest of Europe uh, to strengthen Russia's position. For him right now, it's all win-win-win. Uh, it's rhetoric coming from the West with very, very little impact. And Pete, apparently Putin feels so empowered that he's uh, been talking to the Iranians. And the Iranians, of course, have been talking to the Americans. And we're hearing all this about some sort of accommodation, some sort of agreement now with Iran vis-a-vis -vis nuclear capabilities. Uh, what's your take on what's happening? Can well, you... I mean, I think I read this morning, Secretary Kerry is headed over to uh, Vienna, or headed over to Europe for uh, negotiations to kind of close a deal by November 24, November 26. This is exactly the wrong thing to do. Iran's going to get uh, again, Iran's going to win on this because America wants a deal. We don't want a good deal. We just want a deal. Uh, and this is going on at the same time that our Sunni allies are very, very, very leery of what's happening in the Middle East. They're very leery of Iran. We're cozying up to Iran. And the folks that we need to be working with, the Sunnis to contain ISIS, uh, they're very skeptical of the United States. It's exactly the wrong direction for America to be going at this time. Uh, Pete, uh, you may have to go out and knock, uh, knock the snow off the Skype unit out there. It's uh, freezing up a little bit. But just one more question in this segment. Uh, 30 seconds, if you would, sir. Actually, 20 seconds on what may happen with our relationship with Israel if this deal comes through with Iran. Well, the... Number one, the relationship with Israel at a constituent, at a congressional level, will continue to be very, very strong. Between our president and the leadership in Israel, it will continue to deteriorate. All right, Pete. Well, uh, the frosty nature of the weather outside in Holland, Michigan, the freezing of our Skype transmission perhaps betrays the chill brought to international relations. We'll talk more with Pete Hoekstra and bring in Waleed Farris right after this.